In part one of the Levelmate Pro Leveler Controller, we showed you how to build it. In part two, we will show you how to use it. And if you've not seen video one of the project yet, I will provide a link here for that. And of course, it should go without saying this is going to probably avoid the warranty, but that's the risks you take, I guess. Play stupid games, get stupid prizes. Am I right? You're right. So we need to take the front panel off. And here's a battery holder. And you'll see marked on the board a plus on this side. So then that just goes without saying we need to put the plus lead here and the minus lead there. And to do that, I need to cut a notch in here for the wire. I'm just going to notch it with a pair of nips. And then I finish it up with a file. And on this project, I made the yellow negative and the red positive. Then it's just a matter of soldering the wires. And you could take the battery holder out, I suppose, but actually this will allow you to still use the battery power if you want to at some point. And we're going to leave the on-off switch in here also. All right, takes care of the wiring. And you can see here there's an arrow. Make the arrows on the case go in the same direction. After taking this video, I actually changed the wire out to a connector. I did that so that I could test all three of the levelers without having to resolder everything. And the connector, as you can see, is a red and black wire. Red, of course, being positive black being negative. So if you want to use a connector, substitute the black wire for the yellow wire in the video. For the Cori leveler, the process is similar. Simply attach the power supply feed wires to one of the battery sockets. Either one can be used. And finally, for the Rhino Storm leveler, you also can use either battery, but you have to solder from the back side of the circuit board because in this case, the battery holders are feed-through and not surface mount like the other two, so you have to do it on the back side. There are five modes of operation set by the onboard dip switch. When you change modes, the change does not take effect until the leveler controller is power cycled. That means turning it off, then back on. The modes are Mode 1. The output follows the trigger. Mode 2, trigger with active reset and a 15 minute delay. Mode 3, trigger with active reset and a 60 minute delay. Mode 4, trigger without active reset and 2 hour delay. And Mode 5, trigger without active reset and 4 hour delay. In Mode 1, when the trigger goes to 12 volts, the output goes to 3.3 volts, turning on the Levelmate Pro. When the trigger is removed, that forces the output to go to 0 volts, turning off the Levelmate Pro. So the output state follows the trigger. The useful application here is when connecting the trigger to the taillight circuit. As long as the taillights are on, the Levelmate Pro will be on. In Mode 2, the trigger is momentary. Whenever a trigger is received, the output goes to 3.3 volts, again turning the Levelmate Pro on. The output will remain on for 15 minutes even though the trigger is removed. After the 15 minute period, the output will return to 0 volts, which obviously turns the Levelmate Pro off. However, if during the period of time that the output is on, if another trigger is received, the 15 minute timer is reset, providing an additional 15 minutes, which extends the on time. For example, when the first trigger is received, the Levelmate Pro is turned on, and if a second trigger is received 10 minutes later, the Levelmate Pro will stay on for another 15 minutes for a total of 25 minute on time. This is what's meant by an active trigger. 
If each subsequent trigger is received within 15 minutes, the Level Mate Pro will never turn off. Mode 3 is similar to Mode 2, except the on time is 60 minutes rather than 15 minutes. Otherwise, it's identical. Mode 4 is similar to Modes 2 and 3, except follow-on triggers are inactive. For example, when the initial trigger is received, the output and Level Mate Pro are turned on for 2 hours. And after 2 hours, they are turned off. Any new triggers received during the on time are ignored and will not extend the on time. The output and Level Mate Pro must turn off before any new triggers will turn it on again. And finally, Mode 5 is almost identical to Mode 4, except the on time is 4 hours rather than 2 hours. The common ground feature does affect how the leveler controller is connected to the RV, so we will discuss it further. The leveler controller is opto-isolated. This is accomplished with a device called an opto-isolator. The input side of the opto-isolator is a LED, which turns on when the voltage, or in this case a trigger, is applied. The output side of the opto-isolator is a phototransistor, which captures a light from the LED and acts as a detector for the trigger. Thus, the electrical path is interrupted by an optical path. This provides a 100% isolation between power source A and power source B. When connecting these power sources, both positive and negative terminals have to be run to each power source. However, if the same power source is used for both A and B, then a common ground exists between the two sources. They are still optically isolated, but share a common ground reference. This means that a separate wire is not required for each power source. When used in the RV environment, especially with a 7-pin trailer connector, you will likely use a common ground. All of the connection scenarios assume this. However, you made that decision to use a common ground or not during the construction of the leveler controller, so that will affect if you have to run a separate ground or not. Hint, if the red trigger does not turn on when a trigger is applied to the leveler controller, you likely need to run the ground to the trigger, or enable the common ground feature. Again, the simplest circuit is an on-off switch for the trigger. If the switch is continuous, mode 1 would likely be the best setting. If the switch is momentary, then one of the other modes might be a better option. Note the dotted ground in the drawing. This indicates that the common ground is enabled. We can also connect the trigger to the 7-pin trailer lights connector. If we use the tail marker circuit, the Level Mate Pro will be active whenever the tow vehicle lights are on. Again, Mode 1 would work well here. If you connect the trigger to the trailer backup circuit, then the Level Mate Pro will come on when you put the tow vehicle in reverse. This means the Level Mate Pro will not become active until you arrive at the campground. No need to have it powered when not needed. Many RVs do not use a backup circuit, so often it is unused, so why not use it? Mode 2 would work well here as you would have 15 minutes after putting the vehicle in reverse to find the level spot. This is a configuration that I'll be using when I install the system into my RV. I will be also using a common ground. You could also connect the trigger to the brake circuit, but I don't recommend it. At least from a best practice perspective, nothing should be connected to the brake circuit other than the brakes. If you want to use the brakes to trigger the Level Mate Pro, you can use the left or right turn signal circuit as those lights double as a brake light on most RVs. And if we really want to get fancy, we can connect the trigger to a 433 MHz receiver and that gives us wireless control to the cab of the tow vehicle. It may be a little bit esoteric, but this just gives you an example of how flexible that the leveler controller really is. The Level Mate Pro does have one setting that must be discussed, the idle time until sleep feature. This setting will automatically turn the Level Mate Pro off after the last activity and can be set from 1 to 336 hours. I recommend changing this setting to something that is longer than what the leveler controller is capable of. 
For example, you can have a maximum of a 4 hour delay in mode 5. I would set the Level Mate Pro to something more than 4 hours. Note that there are two additional settings, Run Continuously and Wake on Motion. These are grayed out in the Level Mate Pro as they are only available on the Level Mate Pro Plus. In fact, if you have the Level Mate Pro Plus, you do not need to build this project. The Leveler Controller is only required for those of us too cheap to purchase the Level Mate Pro Plus and later discover we would like some kind of power supply and automatic shutoff feature. The Rhino Storm RV Leveler also has a sleep timer. However, in this case, it is up to 320 hours, so the same advice goes here. The Quarry Leveler does not have such a feature. I installed the Levelmate Pro and Leveler controller in the front hatch of my fifth wheel and was able to reuse the power switch I had originally installed for the power supply project. You can see here that when I turn the switch on, I show the Leveler controller receiving power. At this point, the Levelmate Pro is not on because it is only on when the output LED is on at the Leveler controller. I will be using the backup circuit from the 7-pin trailer wiring harness as the trigger. Unfortunately, this wire was not extended by the trailer manufacturer beyond the wire harness wiring box. That means I have to run a new wire from the yellow wire in the wiring harness to the leveler controller. I will be using a purple wire to do that simply because there are not very many purple wires in the RV. After routing and securing the purple backup wire, I attached it to a 10 amp breaker that I installed on the back panel. This is an automotive short stop circuit style breaker found in many RVs. It is a type 1 breaker, meaning it will auto reset when the short is removed. The breaker has both a copper and silver stud. The copper stud should always go towards the battery or supply side of the circuit. Next, I connected the other side of the breaker to the trigger wire of the leveler controller. I also 3D printed a fancy cover for the breaker, that way it won't short out to anything. I have an STL file for that cover on my website if you want to make one. I previously configured the leveler controller to mode 2, which means a 15 minute on time after receipt of a trigger. Next, I used my trailer test set version 1.5 to test the trigger by connecting it to the trailer's 7 pin wiring harness. I flipped the reverse switch, and as you can see, I received a trigger on the controller and the power to the controller came on. You may notice that the power wire to the Level Mate Pro is disconnected. That's because we're still in the testing phase and I was taking it one step at a time. Okay, you can see Level Mate Pro says connection unsuccessful and then we will hit the reverse we hear two beeps on the level mate controller and we'll do a retry connection found the level mate pro connecting there we go and I'm going to calibrate this I just reinstalled it so now Everything is good. Visit rv-project.com